Hello, this is Saraceli Varela and this is my video. I would like to begin this video with a warning. The following images will contain raw sexual content. Some may find this uncomfortable and some may not. Viewer discretion is advised. In this video, I will analyze Kitagawa Utamaro's A Pair of Lovers woodblock print through the lens of cultural studies and iconography to decipher the characters, setting, and their story. But first, let us begin with the time period and a bit of history. The setting takes place in Edo, Japan during the Edo period, beginning in 1615 and ended in 1868. Fun fact, this city is now one of the largest cities. Tokyo, Japan. But before it became one of the world's largest cities, it was a small fishing site with a population of only a few hundred people. So what happened that put it on the map and made it a growing population? It was this man, Tokugawa Iyasu, who was a shogun. According to dictionary.com, a shogun is someone who is given the title of a chief military commander. Yasu led his army to victory in the Battle of Sakigara. This victory represented political unification, stability, peace, and growth for the future. He migrated his army of samurais, also known as shoguns, to Edo to create one of the largest shogunate ever. He chose Edo because it was distant from influence, invaders, and anything that could interrupt his reign. In doing so, his political systems were authoritarian and not dictatorial. This period of the Tokugawa reign became the period of peace. Even after passing down the reign to his son Hidata and later on to his grandson Himitsu, they, their primary goal was to cut off the roots of potential dissent and rebellion. During the Tokugawa family being emperors, the capital began to grow in population. The samurais of the shogunate capital had to become the backbone and the protectors of it. In doing so, they had to follow moral codes and ethics. A samurai's code of morals was also called the Bushido Code. According to Brett and Kate in their article titled Bushido Code, there are eight virtues a samurai must follow. One, rectitude or justice. Two, courage. Three, benevolence or mercy. Four, politeness. Five, honesty and sincerity. Six, honor. Seven, loyalty. Eight, character and self-control. Since samurais were so held down by these codes, they were forbidden to feel pleasures. They were forbidden to do what they found entertainment for them. But although they had these moral codes that did not stop them from finding what they wanted. For their entertainment and pleasure for the samurais came geishas. According to Liza Dalby's book, Geisha, the geishas work would vary in different ways. For instance, dance, singing, poems, performance, and even courting. Although they were seen today as somewhat prostitutes, these women would be handpicked from a young age and trained vigorously throughout their life. Not only were these women performing for entertainment, but they also act as, acted as hostesses for these men. They would serve them, feed them, and agree with them in any terms. They would sort of be their wife for the moment. Samurais and other men would come to these places that were called Yoshiwaras or greenhouses coined by European travelers. These are not western styled prostitution houses. In fact, the women working were considered professionals and very skilled in what they were doing. They did not perform in only sexual work, but also dancing and singing and would pay, be paid a great deal of money. In Marcia Yenemoto's essay, she states that samurais would go to these greenhouses in disguise. They would take off their armor, wear commoner clothing, and hide their faces with a straw hat. The artist of my focus, Kitagawa Utamaro, was also one of the people who fancied these greenhouses. This is where Shunga art began. Shunga meaning spring pictures. According to Rachel Redjoy's essay, Shunga art was a common art form in the Edo period and was highly purchased from the middle and upper class, not for sexual purposes, but for comedic purposes. According to the book Utamaro, written by Edmund Kungort, 
Kitagawa Utamaro was fascinated with women's bodies. He would elongate their faces and certain body parts to bring emphasis to their beauty. Kitagawa Utamaro's work would depict everyday life for these women and for the people who visited them. In Utamaro's prints, he depicted women as being thin and aloof, and this became the new ideal of femininity during the Edo period. Even though Kitagawa Utamaro was never photographed, his prints and his work are still seen throughout all of Japan and the Western world. Through my research and analysis of A Pair of Lovers, I have come to know that the male character was a samurai and the female a geisha. Geishas would wear multi-layer clothing as the one pictured here. Not only that, but geishas would print poems or songs on their fans so that way when they were performing they would remember. And when referring back to Yenemoto's essay of samurais covering their heads, you can see that this man is wearing a sort of hat, and the female herself, as being a geisha, has her hair upward. We can also see that they are on a balcony or close to the outdoors because we can see foliage. Hence, why Europeans would call these places greenhouses, because there would be many plants and many connections to the outdoors in these prints. As for the print itself, we see different elements such as repetition, rhythm, misproportion, emphasis, movement, and linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. Repetition and rhythm can be seen in the geisha's dress. We see different patterns in how they move. Misproportion in how the hands are painted compared to the neck and the heads to the characters. Movement. If you look at their gowns, you see the way their legs are intertwined. I choose this photo to be a modern version of what Kitagawa Utamaro A Pair of Lovers would look like. Same as A Pair of Lovers, they are faceless. We see their sexual connection and we see that they are intertwined by the legs. We see vibrant colors and we see where their bodies touch. And same with A Pair of Lovers, her hands are grasping his face. This is my artwork inspired by Kitagawa Utamaro's print. I chose to do what a literal greenhouse means today and took photos of different kinds of Japanese flowers and then chose a pair of lovers that I found. I decided to do it this way because when I originally saw Kitagawa Utamaro's pair of lovers, I thought that they really were a couple. And so I also decided to choose an actual greenhouse. I chose the greenhouse because after Professor Daring had gave me some information that they were called greenhouses, I literally thought they meant greenhouses. So I took his image and put it into my literal perspective. I also chose to do Japanese flowers because this is set in Japan. And also greenery because in the original print of Kitagawa Utamaros, we see greenery within the background.